Okay, so we have looked at uh, the numbers that we find found around my home and uh, before we just going to analyze those numbers a little bit let's just look at the different types of numbers that we do find uh, in the real world okay first of all we can look at the, the basic numbers that you learned when you started counting the numbers one two three and this goes on and on and on okay these are the way the numbers these are the numbers that appear naturally for example when we page through a book you go to page one, page two, page three, you very seldom get a page zero. And because that's how numbers occur in the natural world, world, we call it natural numbers. The natural numbers. Okay, so natural numbers are all the whole numbers, but it excludes zero. All the whole numbers excluding zero and also no negative numbers they are called the natural numbers and the symbol that we use for natural numbers is an n and because it starts with one we're going to use a little base a one as its base so let me do it bigger here for you so that you can see there's the natural numbers uh, symbol okay now that is a small the smallest set of numbers that we have. If we include zero to this collection of numbers, so now we say, okay, we let's take all the natural numbers and we add zero also. We, we make a collection of numbers. Then this new collection of numbers are called the counting numbers. Now, why does that make sense? Well, let me explain. If you ask me how many children I have, okay, then I might say I've got one or I've got two. As a matter of fact, we hope to have four. But if you ask me how many children I have, I would say zero. If I had to count my children, I would say zero because I have none. I could have one, I could have two. Someone can probably have a hundred. Okay? But um, counting is there for all the counting numbers include all of the natural numbers. That's why this pink circle is inside of the blue circle. The counting numbers include all of them and also zero. That's the counting numbers. Now, that's not all the numbers in the world. We can um, make this group even bigger and we can do so by adding the negative numbers. So if I had negative one and I have the number negative two, and I have the number negative 3. That would also be numbers that are not natural numbers, neither are they counting numbers, and obviously it can be any negative number, but all of these numbers together would be called the integers. Okay, now I forgot to show you the symbol for the net counting numbers this is the symbol for the counting numbers it is all the natural numbers as well so we use an n including zero that's why for the base we have a zero so let me do a big here for you that is the symbol for counting numbers now how about integers for integers we have a z and where the, the diagonal of the z is this double line so uh, that's big enough, I'm sure you guys can see. Now inter integers are therefore all of the whole numbers, including the whole numbers that are negative and the whole numbers that are positive and zero. So maybe you don't understand what I mean when I say a whole number. A whole number just excludes any commas. It's numbers without commas. That's the integers. But we do get numbers that have commas. Okay, and those numbers can be, oh, numbers that can be written as fractions, okay, they are called rational numbers, rational numbers, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction, m over n. In other words, a fraction of two integers. 
For example, let me give you one example here. A half. A half is not a whole number, but it can be written as a fraction, 1 divided by 2, or as a decimal, 0, 5. But not all decimal numbers are rational numbers. We'll see that in a moment. Okay? But numbers, rational numbers can be written as a fraction of an integer divided by an integer. And we'll look at some more examples. But if we get rational numbers, it means we also get numbers that are not rational, that cannot be written like this. And those numbers are called irrational. So if I consider all the numbers in the real world, all the numbers that can ever exist, obviously it includes all of these. Therefore, my all the numbers in the real world, all the numbers in the real world are called real numbers. Does that mean we get imaginary numbers? Yes, we do get imaginary numbers, but that's not in the scope of school. Real numbers are all the numbers in the world. And the symbol that we use for real numbers is an R with this double line at the back. Now, since in the real numbers we get rational numbers, everything in the green, then outside of the green is the numbers that are not rational, the irrational numbers. Okay. Now, what type of numbers are those? Well, the most common ones that you guys are going to encounter is the value pi and the square root of something that doesn't have a perfect square. For example, the square root of 2. So let me show you how I know something is an irrational number. So let me just get my calculator. Here's my calculator. Let's look at the value pi. There we go. There's pi's value. Pi is not 3,14. That is pi rounded off to two decimal places. No, no. Pi has got many decimal places, infinitely many. It goes on forever and ever. As a matter of fact, there's a man that has memorized a hundred thousand digits. In other words, if we just look at the first three digits, it's 3,14. There's a guy that's actually memorized a hundred thousand of them. Okay? And these hundred thousand uh, digits even go on and they never repeat. In other words, never again is there a 14159265 And every time there's a random number following. Well, not really random, but uh, you can't follow some pattern to find it. And this is how we know something is irrational, is when it's got a decimal place that goes on for infinite, uh, to infinity without ever repeating itself then it is called a rational, uh, irrational number. Okay, let's look at the square root of 2. So I take 2, the square root of 2. Then I see, do you see once again, it's 1, 4142. Again, no repeating pattern and decimals that never end. The only reason why it ends here with that 7 is because they don't, uh, they can't put infinitely many on the screen. Okay, they, we don't have space, but it will go on forever and ever without a pattern. Great stuff. Those are just two examples. There's actually infinitely many irrational numbers. But they are numbers that occur in the real world. As a matter of fact, one of the numbers that we saw earlier in, uh, in my home can be used to find an irrational number. And I'm going to show you guys that in just a minute. Okay, so that is irrational numbers. Let's just show you something else. If I take 1 divided by 3, you see 1 over 3, that is an integer divided by an integer. And according, um, according to what we have in this green circle, an integer divided by an integer is a rational number. But look what I get as an answer. 0, 0,333. That also goes on to infinity, but it repeats itself. If I take 1 divided by 7, that's an integer divided by an integer. And the answer I get, oh, that, that also goes on for ever and ever, and ever. But look at the pattern. 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. Do you see? It follows, it repeats itself. 
and therefore it is not irrational, it makes rational sense. Okay, and there's a way of going from here back into, um, rash, into a fraction, and that you might learn later as well. Okay, let's just go and look at the numbers that I found around my home. Remember, the first number that we found was that 2 liters on the, on the juice box. So let's go back. What type of number is a two is two? Two liters, what type of number is it? Okay? Is it an, a natural number? Okay? Yes. It is a rational number. If it's a rational number, then it's in this pink group, which means it's also in the blue group. In other words, it's also a counting number. And it's also in the light blue group, which means it's also an integer. And all of the integers are rational numbers. Okay? And here you might say, oh, really, sir? All of the integers are rational? Can 2 be written? So let's just get rid of that. Liters. Can 2 be written as a fraction? Yes, it can. I can just say 2 divided by 1. That's a fraction of 2 integers. 2 divided by 1. So 2 is indeed, let's write it like this, 2 is indeed a natural number. It's also a counting number. It's also an integer. It's also a rational number. And I don't think I put the rational numbers symbol, the rational numbers symbol is a cube. So a rational number and it's also a real number. Okay, then we had a number 50 rand and 75 cents. That was the price of the spices. 50 rand and 75 cents. Okay, is that a natural number? No. Natural numbers must be an integer, must be a whole number, and 50 rand and for 75 cents is not a whole number. 50 rand is a whole number, 75 cents is a fraction. So it cannot be a natural or a counting number, and also uh, because we know it's not a whole number. Okay? Is it rational? Can 50 rand and 75 cents be written as a fraction? Well, let's have a look. 50,75 divided by 1. Is that an integer divided by an integer? No. But we've got a little trick up our sleeve. If we multiply this by 100, we can move the comma two spaces. And when it's at the back, we need not write it. But a very crucial thing in mathematics is that you must always keep the balance. Okay, you can't change 50 rand and 75 cents and multiply that with a hundred without doing the opposite. So I'm allowed to multiply with a hundred if I also divide with a hundred. Then it's fine. I've multiplied and divided by a hundred so I've actually not done anything wrong. Okay? I took a step forward and a step back. I'm really back at where I was. But let's just see what we get. Okay? When we move that comma two spaces by multiplying with a hundred we get 50 75 divided by 100. Okay, I multiplied the numerator and numerator, the denominator with the denominator. So I get a fraction of two integers over each other. Now, if you go and use your calculator again to just see what is 5075 divided by 100, and you get back the answer we had 50 rand 75. So we were able to write this as a fraction of two integers, which means it definitely is a rational number, which also means it has to be a real number. All numbers that you encounter in the real world is real numbers. Okay, so that was another number we found. We also found on the fridge the negative 15 degrees Celsius. Negative 15 degrees Celsius. Is that a natural number? 
Remember, natural numbers is one and above. All the whole numbers, one and above. No, it's not. Is that a counting number? Counting numbers are from zero to above. No, it's not. Is it an integer? Yes, it is. Remember, integers are all of the whole numbers, including the zero and negatives. So it is an integer. And if something is an integer, it can be written as a fraction over a fraction because we can write it uh, sorry uh, an integer over an integer because we can write it as negative 15 divided by 1 if it is a rational number then it's definitely a real number because it really really exists okay okay that was the negative 15 we also had the value 100 100 milliliters 100 milliliters represented this size of the spice bottle okay and again we see a hundred is a positive number a positive whole number and we so that means it is definitely a natural number a counting number an integer if it is an integer it can be written as a fraction just divide by one and definitely a real number it was a hundred milliliters and as I said we looked at the at the, at, at the gears on our on our bikes was the numbers one two three could have been pages in a book and these once again I see that whole numbers bigger than one okay bigger and equal to one so they are natural numbers they are counting numbers they are integers, therefore they are rational and they are real numbers. Okay. But then I also measured the table. Remember when I measured the table? And I got an answer of 450 millimeters. That was the diameter of, of a table. Okay. Now, I'm talking about that table's circumference. I wanted to measure the table's circumference. And I was able to measure the diameter. That's the diameter. Now, for the circumference, we use a special formula. The circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Okay, that's a formula. So, where r is the radius. In other words, not the diameter, just half of the diameter. So let's go put that in our formula and see what we get. So we get 2 pi. Now I'm not going to put in 3,14 because pi is not 3,14. Okay. I'm going to use my calculator's value for pi. And the radius is half of the diameter. So I'm just going to take the diameter and divide it by 2. Okay. So let's go and use the calculator to get that answer. 2 times, remember when there's nothing, it's a multiply, 2 times pi. There's pi, an irrational number. Okay? Times, and then in brackets we there have 40, uh, 450 over 2. So in brackets, 450 divided by 2. Close the brackets. The 450 divided by 2 is uh, 225. But this whole answer is, ooh, Look at that. This is in millimeters. Okay. Let's write that answer down. Millimeters 141371. 141,3,71. 6694. 6694. And this answer actually goes on infinitely. Which means that I've just calculated or found an irrational number in my home. It was this distance. If I was able to measure 100% accurate that diameter, uh, the, 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 the circumference of that table's top, I would find it's uh, 1,413 uh, millimeters, comma, 716944. And if I say 100% accurate, it means I'm going to go infinite many decimals. That won't work. So usually we round the answer off. And when I round off, I use curly brackets. So let's just go two decimal places. One, four, 
0.13,7. Is this closer to 71 or 72? Okay, because that's a 6, it's closer to 72. Okay, and there we go. Let's just put this answer that we have here. This answer is therefore, because it's irrational, it is not an integer, it is not rational, it is irrational, but it is still a real answer that exists really in the world. Thanks guys, I hope you get it. Now, for homework, this is what you're going to do. A simple exercise. For homework, you must go around your house. I want you to at least get five different numbers. At least five different numbers. More if you can, but five is great. And try find numbers that fall in each of these categories in your home. And then you're going to share it with us tomorrow during class. Okay, five different numbers. Try get one from each category at least. And then also uh, share that with us tomorrow. Decide in which category each of them are. And you're going to share your numbers with us tomorrow. Great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. See you